Hey everyone, welcome back to Garden Rescue. Uh, yeah, we were supposed to take a break, weren't we? <laughs> that didn't happen. Um, today we are in Legion's Zoo. You can see right here. He's got a pretty big zoo right here. A lot of different animals. A lot of different protesters. <laughs> but what he's given me is this area to work on. The tropical house. And it's beautiful, isn't it? I feel like I really don't have to do anything. Um... The, uh, the structure is, is pretty nice, and the dome and everything. I mean, really all I have to work on this area in here and just fill in some plants, that should be pretty easy, right? Yeah, wrong. <laughs> this is, uh, is going to be a different garden rescue because uh, we're going to be focusing mostly on how to build an interior from an exteriorly built building. Let's say that ten times fast. Um... Yeah, this is, this is going to be a challenge because to have an interior, um, it has to be plausible. And right now, it is not plausible. <laughs> um, even if I were to just open up some walls and box everything up, it would not look very good. So this is going to be a bit, bit of a different challenge. Um, we're still going to be doing a lot of gardening on the inside once we get it all set up and some gardening on the outside. Um, but yeah, my concerns for this particular garden rescue... Mostly, nothing is done. <laughs> there's no floors, there's nothing on the inside. So a lot of that has to be fixed. Um, the interior has to be walkable, and it doesn't necessarily have to be peep walkable, but if I put a camera in there, um, it has to look like I can walk through it. Second area of concern is the central vault here. Um, it needs to be able to be supported, but I want to be able to, when I walk in, see, you know, look up and see that it actually is a dome or a, a, a vault. I want to make sure, I mean, if I can, I'd like to get some more light in here too, because this uh, is very kind of dark when you walk in. Um, I don't think we'll be able to do any windows on the, oh boy, even this side is, okay. There's a lot of work to do. <laughs> But I think, I think this side is not going to be doable to, to increase more windows or some light. So I will have to do it probably on this back side. This has gone from a garden rescue show to a HGTV open, let's, you know, open up all the walls and make this an open concept sort of thing. But um, it does improve the look of the interior already, just having that kind of opened up there. So we'll, we'll fix that. The other areas of concern is that this is a fairly small space and um, it's going to be a bit of a challenge to fill it up with some things that aren't going to like intersect or come out of the walls or come out of the glass. Um, so that to make it look full like a like a true tropical house. Um, but to keep it all contained, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. And then there is the last issue that I see um, happening is that all of this material, especially all this uh, brick and stuff like that, it can't simply free float like that. Uh, if you notice that he's used it as the outer piece. So there has to be some sort of supporting mechanism for all this brick. And so we're going to have to figure out how to do that and what that's going to look like exactly. Same thing for the vault. Um, we need to make sure that it looks supported so that it uh, the integrity of the material is showing through. So definitely a different uh, garden rescue this time, but let's get started anyway. All right, here we are. We've blown out a few walls. We've made this plenty more open concept. And yeah, the light's shining through. The, the space is looking a lot bigger, a lot better. And then if I look up, whoa, what is this thing? Well, this is the vault idea that I'm going to go with. Um, and I'm going to have it supported by four columns. You can see the two right there. And then um, the rest should tie in pretty nicely. And you might be wondering, how in the world did I do a circular dome like this, especially a really complicated shape? Well, I would love to tell you. And I'm going to show you out here. So you can see that this is the, the vault that I actually built. Um, and then I just placed it inside because it's a lot easier to do things outside and It's done by using what's called the mud pillar technique And if you don't know what the mud pillar technique is, I am going to show you right now 
All right, so we're gonna start with a mud column. Um, it's the only column piece that uh, is in the game that is on the grid, and that's what's important is that it's on the grid. So plop that down. And then you have to think about making one tiny little uh, section. And so we'll just do it with plaster because that's really easy. What you wanna do is extend it out from the mud pillar like that. And say that I want to be, let's do, Let's do something that looks like this. So I'm going to build out this little piece here. There you go, that looks pretty darn awful. <laughs> there we go. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to highlight everything there. I'm going to highlight the pillar and I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Control D. Move it across 180 degrees. Make sure you remove the pillar um, that you just created. Then you can exclude the pillar entirely and then hit uh, X to advance move and you're gonna move it into a cross pattern and you're gonna take the whole thing and you're gonna do it again and you're gonna move it into a diagonal pattern and then you're gonna do it again, oops, like that. And then from here, we can usually go straight to this. And so we just want all of the edges to line up properly. And now this one's gonna be a little bit weird because I've got some areas that are smaller, some areas that are bigger. Um, but if you do this seamlessly, you can get some pretty good results. And so just like that, I have a very complex round shape. <laughs> and that's exactly what this is. Okay, and there you can see that all of you know any sort of detail that I want to come out, I just um, add another plaster piece to that little piece that I started with, and there you go. But the cool thing is that you have a center point then, so you can place that wherever you want, and then if you happen to have another um, another like detail piece to keep it all aligned, just keep that center post in there, and then align with the center post. And there you go. From there, it's just a lot of filling in, making sure that your pieces don't extend outside, uh, because if they do, they'll they'll show on the outside and then that's no good. Um, in here, just use very simple kind of materials, um, this plaster and brick, and then some steps down to get to the lower end here. In here, I think is what I'm gonna do is have an Amazonian um, water lily. So it needs a certain body of water and stuff like that and we'll, we'll get there. And then on this side um, is just gonna be a continuation of what was happening on the other side. All right, well you may be asking why I decided on this shape. Um, and it has to do with the materials that uh, Legion's already used. And so a lot of brick, super heavy, um, requires a lot of vertical force, so at some point that has to be interrupted with uh, with a stronger shape. And so, I've got a little demonstration for you over here. Here is um, the silhouette of that building as it is right now. And you can see that, um, you know, as the weight increases, the force uh, becomes really important on these sorts of walls. Now this is fine because it looks like there is an interior chamber, but if we turn it into a 3D, here we go. No longer is that usable interior space. Um, and so what we need to do is be able to remove these walls in some sort of safe way while still keeping the, the top weight just fine. And so that's where we get into this guy. And you see that it has a dome, which is a super strong shape in uh, nature. Um, the way that it is able to distribute forces very evenly is why it's uh, used in so many classical structures. Um, and it also allows you to have a much bigger interior. Um, whereas with that one, with this one, you would have a much, much smaller interior. But this is still, just a larger kind of cylinder. I want to be able to make sure that, you know, you can actually have stuff on the inside. So fourth model comes out. <laughs> All right, and that is kind of the final one that we have. So when you walk in, you notice you've got four big posts that are holding a lot of the weight of the entire dome, but it's being transferred evenly 
all the way to those posts. And then the rest of this is, is basically a glorified horizontal beam um, that circles around the dome and that gives it its uh, strength. Um, if they wanted to go even larger, then you would have to just have another arch or another vault or something like that to be able to take the weight of the dome on top of the dome on top of the dome. And so that's why I went with that particular shape, uh, just because it is distributing the weight of that uh, tower evenly, and that's exactly what I wanted. All right, you can see we're a little bit further along here. Um, I've got some, I've got some Australian tree fern here in the center that seems to always be in the middle of these like tropical houses. Um, yeah, it looks, it looks really awesome. Some cycads is, I've just layered a bunch of, uh, date palms together to create what looks like a cycad, which is, I think it's part of the fern family. It's really, oh boy. Hold on, let me get back in. This is this is the tricky part, is trying to get the camera to stay inside this damn building. But they're really easy to take care of. They generally don't have very large of a root system. That's why they can fit in these sorts of pots here. Um, the rest of this I don't believe has been done yet, but you can see the vaulting is almost complete. Um, there's still a lot of work to do there. But this is the big, this is the big to do in here. Isn't this cool? So this is the Amazonian lily pond um, that I wanted originally. And you can see that it has a nice clean uh, water cube in here. If you don't know what the water cube technique is, that is when you put a barrier um, together, you add the water, and then you just lower the walls of the barrier. Um, I think I talked about it a little bit in uh, Toranga, Toranga Zoo. <laughs> I have had to learn how to say that name. Um, but yeah, it's used here as well. And then you'll notice that um, the brick has, I mean, the, the space has actually gotten a lot smaller because originally, if I look over here, you can see that he had brick floating um, just on the top there. But as we saw from our demonstration earlier, you have to do something with the vertical shear or the vertical weight of that brick. And so that's what led me to adding some arches. Um, arches are evenly distributing that weight of the glass roof all the way around. There's a bit of a soffit here, but you can see that the, the beams basically go back into this post and go down. So the forces are all kind of equalized here. Um, it still looks like an old building, which was the point, um, but it's starting to it's starting to have some interesting interior space now. You have a little step up. Um, which gets you to the, the a little bit closer to the water lilies here. And I've noticed that in these old type uh, greenhouses, there really there's not a lot of railings or anything like that. You're kind of on your own. So that's what I've tried to emulate here. The important thing is from the outside, you're not seeing pieces kind of break through, which um, is the, the real challenge of this entire build is that I've had to change materials here and there. Um, I've had to add more plaster pieces, spines and stuff like that. Change the roof, change the soffits, um, add these little bits here because there's um, that's where the, the dome is kind of settling into. But from a distance, it doesn't look like it's changed much at all, which is exactly what I want. here's the next update you can see that uh, not a whole lot has changed in here I don't, I don't think oh now we've got a little bit more of a planter here this beautiful tamarind tree that fits perfectly into the space and if you have uh, like trees growing in these old spaces they will go to the edges there there's no empty room at all I ch did change the the ceiling a little bit there you can see it's got a little bit more of a sunburst pattern which I think just gives it a little bit more um, intrigue and interest and the vault I believe is done um, if I look up yeah I've got the the roof fully in yeah you'll notice that there is wood in the top of the ceiling there which would be a little strange for for a largely wet or humid house um, I just figured this is an old building and that's what they would have and and to keep it from you know rotting they would just get up there with a some uh, sealant or something like that, and they would keep it keep it nice and uh, oiled. And then this side also has the rest of its um, infrastructure put in, so you can see all the brick arches um, are 
maintaining the weight of this entire house. And th I thought this was really cool too. This was a really neat discovery I just made um, by adding arrowwood uh, bushes together in a sort of kind of vining pattern. And then you add some of those alpine sea hollies from a distance, they look an awful lot like either passion fruit uh, vine or even uh, clematis, which um, does have a lot of that kind of bluish purple and really big showy flowers too. So I feel like that would definitely work in a house like this. Some other things to note is that um, all my buildings, um, a lot of the interior space here, has some sort of molding at the base. In this case, it's a marble molding. Um, a lot of these buildings just had these sorts of details and I think uh, they, they really add to the whole experience. I did give these beams a lot of interest here, just a little bit of a deco kind of uh, inspiration. I didn't want to make it too, um, too historic, but I also didn't want it to look way too modern uh, with with very very clean lines I wanted to make sure that there was still some of that um, kind of molded look and I would have loved to have had like this be an open window um, but the way that the outside is set up there's no possible way to do it because of these these roof pieces um, they're great roof pieces but they just they you can see from the inside here that they don't uh, yeah, they don't give you any sort of light and there was no way to do a window. So that is what I ended up uh, settling on, but it would have been really cool to have a window there. <laughs> Here we are at the end. It's a bit of a shorter garden rescue. Um, usually they have about four updates, but this one only required about three. And here we are. Here we are at the tropical house in Legion's Zoo. You can see that the front has received quite a lot of um, very simple landscaping, honestly. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't over the top. This is an old house. This is an old building. And um, it's a tropical house, so I didn't necessarily want to have like lush tropical stuff on the outside. Generally, if you have a house that has tropical plants, you don't have a climate that can handle tropical plants. So I instead went for more deserty type stuff, very generic um, type bushes and stuff like that. But it's that medium green, it's that general kind of, it's there, but it doesn't really do anything that actually makes this house look a lot better. Um, it doesn't take away from the architecture at all. Whoa, a little too far. It just is kind of there, and it still kind of invites you to, to go take a look and see what's going on. Instead of a slope path up, I wanted to make sure that we had some stairs, but in the uh, respect of people with disabilities, there are ramps on either side. So there are big uh, circular steps up, and then, oh, he's going right through the building. That's cool. Here we go, ooh, and here we are on the inside of the tropical house. Again, not how much has changed here, but basically just everything is done now. I turn around to this side, and there we go. Lots of different plants, um, but nothing too wild and different. It's just a lot of different greens that are um, being lit up by this beautiful window. You can see that I've got a little bit more green in this pool because uh, if this is a brick bottom pool, there's definitely going to be algae and stuff that grows on, on the bottom. It gets super slick. Um, duckweed starts forming on the top and other types of algae. It doesn't appear that this has any sort of filtration system either. It, it probably has a drain and the filter system is in the back there. There's another little bit of my... Uh, impromptu clematis which is absolutely beautiful and then a little bit of a trickling waterfall um, over the brick here it's a very simple design that i think works really well here for a mixture that didn't feel too um overgrown i decided to use a lot of the banana uh palms because they they catch the light really well i used a lot of the um elephant ear i think elephant ear is the the name of it and then also just kind of feathered in some of that elephant grass back there to make it look a little bit more lush um, and change the, the textures a bit. It's such a small space, it requires a lot of texture to be interesting. Otherwise, uh, there'd be no, re no reason for you to really come into this room. And then we turn around and here is the other side. A little quieter, a um, little bit more subdued, but 
you can see that I've got a lot of different blues and purples and stuff like that, and I kind of wanted that to to show up, is that you have a lot of these little, um, like, forget-me-nots or something like that down here that may have just grown in, or the person who's taking care of the house, you know, it's not explicitly tropical, but it's, it's nice. And same thing, you just have a lot of green materials, a lot of different textures, and not a whole lot of, um, not a whole lot of really crazy exotic stuff. I've noticed in tropical houses, it's a lot of green, um, and most tropical flowers are not super showy. They will usually put out a, a display, but then they may take about six months before it will have enough energy to put out another display. So in general, these tropical houses are very, very green and not much else. It, you'd be you'd be surprised to find like a big bloom or a big show of color. I thought this was neat having the clematis climb up and over and it's up in the rafters so they actually had to tie it up um, for the weight of that whole vine to stay up there. It's just uh, it's just nicely overgrown. And then you got this beautiful window back here that's all been cleaned up. Um, it actually goes out to a staff path which is a little interesting. Um, I wonder if he'll change it now that I've got all this installed here. But, you know, it's nice either way. You can get a little bit of a glimpse of the many protesters in this zoo. <laughs> and then lastly, if I've done my job right, you should not be able to tell from the outside um, all the changes that I had to make to, to make the interior work. It should look like the same house that it did. Um, there are little changes here and there, but that's just to, to make sure that those pieces don't pop out. Yeah, I... Uh, I dig it. <laughs> I really like the way this came out, and uh, I hope Legion does too. I kept the plant palette fairly simple out here too. Um, the trees are all basically either old vertical... Um, I, I, these happen to just be corkwoods uh, stacked on top of each other, but there is, a, there is a tree that I'm going for that I can't quite remember at the moment. Um, and then these guys on the outside, these uh, kind of these really rough palms and stuff like that, and some Dracaena and, and all that cool stuff. So it would be fairly easy to take care of. Um, you can see that this old, I really like the, the mud walls in this game because they look like old plaster. Um, it's super, super like undulating and puckered. And on this side, you can see that the, the wall is just there, but the soil is following the, the line of the path. So it's a little, it's, it's a little funky, but I've, I've definitely seen stuff like this before. It totally feels like it's just been, just been lost to time and there's really no reason to update it or anything like that. It's just here and somebody takes care of it. So I think that'll do it for today. If you liked what you saw, you know what to do. Um, next garden rescue. I mean, I've, I've got a few on the horizon. Um, they're just, it's just the timing that's a little tricky. So I am possibly doing a garden rescue in Kinderly Zoo, I'm possibly doing a garden rescue in Remnants Balboa Zoo. I'm doing a garden rescue in Drew Zoo. I'm doing a garden rescue in Ruble Zoo. And I feel like I'm forgetting one more. Possibly Duct Tape Forum's uh, Desert Garden as well. So there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot going on. Um, we're definitely going to stretch it out a little bit. Um, but these are these are really fun to do. They're really easy to turn around. And I think it's I think it's an absolute blast having these sorts of challenges. It, it I think, makes me a better designer, honestly. So I uh, hope you come back for the next one. And uh, until next time, I'll see you later, guys.